Probably was just gonna the stomach. But we kind of tore up juicy burgers. We kind of the oasis. Maybe in the fall. Okay. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, true. Yeah, now it's like you don't know what to do with Getting away from a little bit. Yeah. 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 Well, you, you know, you're you working. Break uh, form and be prompt and on time today. But uh, <laughs> as usual, circumstances uh, intervened. Ada was sick last night. It was, it was a tough, tough morning. But um, uh, this is so great to uh, sit here with all of you one more, one more time. We, um, you know, I figure we never actually, unlike. President Karen Paul actually went back through and got a precise count on her number of city council meetings. We haven't quite done that with bagels, but I believe this is uh, well over 500 that we've been doing. And uh, looking around the room, um, if you add up the number of times you all have been here, it would be many thousands, uh, given the, the regulars we have, have here. Um, you know, I'm not quite sure uh, the best way for us to do it this morning. You know, normally, uh, as, you know, people who are haven't been regulars, you know, we kind of go around and uh, get uh, get some topics on the table. But <laughs> that's Jordan, my chief of staff. For those of you, many of you have met her here over the years. Jordan, one of the reasons we stayed committed to doing this uh, all this time. Sometimes uh, Jordan would actually get me on a bike to come out here, especially once we got the bike lanes built. Um, yeah, great. Well, I guess uh, before we go around, I know not everyone will be able to say so. Let me let me just kick things off with uh, uh, a couple remarks. I I, I will. Um, I th a lot of you I think know that we started doing these Wednesday morning events uh, back be before I was mayor, wh right when uh, I announce my candidacy uh, for to be a, the Democratic nominee uh, for for the, the position and um, you know to as, as and I don't think everyone here was around back then to win to become the Democratic nominee I had to win this contested caucus against turned out to be three other much more experienced qualified candidates and to win a caucus we had to get hundreds of people to come to Memorial Auditorium on a Sunday afternoon in November, and uh, you know, I started out with some supporters, but had to, to find a lot of others quickly. And one of the strategies that we settled on was to have these coffee conversations. We and we actually did them every morning of the week for about two months uh, leading up to that that caucus. So we had we had uh, we had one in every part of the city, um, and. Uh, 
and and it was just barely successful enough. For those of you who uh, don't know the story, we survived a tie vote, 540 to 540 at one point. So uh, I definitely credit these uh, coffee conversations with um, making everything that followed possible. Um, then uh, when as a candidate and then as a new mayor, uh, I knew it was important that to have a connection with this part of the city. It had always seemed to me in my kind of observations of city government that this part of the city was often polarized and, and sort of uh, alienated by um, what, uh, what was happening down at City Hall. And I thought there might be a way by having a physical presence out here on a regular basis that we could we could break some of that down. And I, you know, I wouldn't say it was entirely successful. I certainly uh, pissed a bunch of people off in this part of the city <laughs> with those bike lanes and, and some of the other decisions. But um, I do think it mattered to be out here every week. It kept me um, uh, in, uh, aware of what was was happening out here it allowed me to make sure you know there is something about the mayor's office especially with my, the way I tried to do it maybe where it got easy to sort of it, there was a trap of being in the office too much and being too focused on the the, the, the details of, of trying to keep things running day to day uh, having to, a commitment to be out here every week um, made sure uh, was a, pushed against that made sure I stayed connected with what people were thinking um, and um, and so we kept doing it. And uh, I'm so grateful to Peter for allowing us to. Thank you, Thank you Mel. Yeah. I think a lot of cafe owners wouldn't have been so happy about the, uh, the shop being uh, taken over like this. I mean, this is a large crowd today, but we had a lot of days that were approached this and. Um, I know there were times where, there were a few times where things got a little uncivil and that concerned you, Peter, and you took uh, actions to make sure that didn't continue. But other, were they were rare. You've been an incredible host. Thank you for making this possible. Um, and then just a couple last thoughts. I, I, uh, another reason that I kept doing it is, um, you know, part of it, it was, it was, it was the regulars who showed up all the time, helped me uh, navigate all the challenges of this job. You, you know, the fact that so many of you continue to show up during the pandemic when we did this uh, for, for months um, online was part of my personally being able to uh, kind of get through the isolation and the, tra the, um, the challenges of the pandemic. Uh, but another thing that made it me think that this was you know, if it had just been the regular showing up, I might have questioned whether this made sense, right? If it was just 10 or 12 or 25 of you, uh, is this where I should be spending, you know, a couple hours of mayoral time every week? It might have been a question. But I knew that even for people who weren't showing up, there was value in this. That people, I, I always had this sense that people liked that we were doing this. And one of the, even if they couldn't make it there regularly, and one of the reasons I believe that is literally almost every week for 12 years, somebody new came to offer a new perspective, to get a question uh, asked, an answered, um, to make sure I was aware of something. Um, it, it, so many times, uh, you know, Emma and Jordan and other people worked in the mayor's office over the years, we would go back to City Hall with a to-do list of things to follow up on that uh, we wouldn't have gotten any other way. And um, it just, uh, you know, uh, it, it just was clear to me this is uh, something I wanted to keep doing. So thank you all for, for being here and being part of this uh, for so long and, and for being here this morning. It's quite touching to see so many here today. Thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the, uh, the pods on Elmwood Avenue because it really does help. It made a difference. Well, David, you showing up every week for the last couple of years to make sure not only I heard that, but that so many of your neighbors heard that and kind of put out a different narrative about that than some people were telling. Uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, there were, there were issues that, that came as a result of us doing that and there, and there were challenges with it. And I think sometimes those challenges were inflated and exaggerated and you made sure that we didn't 
overreact to them. So uh, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Jim. We had our differences, but I'm, I'm here to thank you for your effort to get us in that service. And uh, I have here my last electric bill, All right. which was 13 cents because <laughs> we got solar array and uh, heat pump, and we built up by October $600 in credit with Burlington Electric, which just the last of it was my last bill, and I signed my bill here. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Now, Jim, remind me, like, we had issues with your roof, right? Like, yes. we had to, uh, we had to, we had to, to and we had to make, you know, we had to get rid of this, like, crazy, <laughs> keep three feet of uh, space around every edge of the, uh, right? Uh, there was disconnect between, uh, actually, there was no connection between um, the, the inspection folks, the fire folks, and, and, and the solar company. Yeah. And uh, with one call, or, you know, Mike Canterac helped a lot uh, to uh, make that happen. And the solar people said to me, oh, we've never talked to people in the uh, building, you know, in the inspection. And anyway, we got, right? wow. got, got done and it got installed a year ago. The head of uh, the solar array, or actually, uh, the head of the heat pump. So, Anyway. So did you see the uh, the uh, report we put out last yes. week that showed that you are part of yes. a very important transformation of what homes, uh, how homes are built, how they're how they're powered here in Burlington. There's now 2,300 heat pumps have been installed. The uh, solar. Um, we've gone from having almost no solar installations in the city to being for years, you know, multiple years running now. The most per capita solar installations of any city east of the Mississippi, and it's actually making a difference. It's clear now with uh, with with our emissions. Our emissions are down 18 percent since 2018, and you know when the West, rest of the world catches up with that, uh, we will we, we will well, have to, we will have addressed this climate emergency. Will you provide a rebate uh, for the during the three minutes it will be dark? <laughs> <laughs> You have, to, you, have to, you have to talk to Emma about that. Yeah. She is in charge of the eclipse. <laughs> um, well, that's great, Jim. And I particularly, it is touching that you come and, and, and say that because we, I, I remember that we disagreed on, on some things and, and you were passionate and but that we were able to continue to communicate, stay, uh, uh, share a sense of where the community to go in some ways. Um, through that is uh, is really appreciated. Yes. <laughs> well, I've always remember James, Mary Jane, uh, that that's you played a role in these conversations and making sure you know we was not clear what the policy should be. Um, should we plow it? Should we leave it? Um, should, we, should, we, should we leave it uh, with snow on it so that people could cross country ski? And um, I, I'm, as I remembered, I think your input and conversations played a role in us coming up with the policy of kind of compromising. Half of it, half of it plowed, half of it uh, left for snow, and, and we did that as as, the, as as each section of the bike got, path got rebuilt. Um, we would implement that that policy and now. You do the whole eight miles. Someone plowed the bridge through this weekend. It was great. And the tennis course. And I thank you for that. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll say, I wasn't going to say thank you when you announced, but now it's time that I can say thank you for all you've done. It's, you've had a lot of challenging issues. Man, I can't imagine being in your position the last four years, especially. So now I will say thank you for all you've done for us. But I think the city's got issues, but it's moving in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us so many times at this table. Ed. Yeah, Moreau, I just want to say something. That, that I came to uh, Burlington after a 30-year career in addiction health in Lamoille County in 2015, and somebody directed me to you to said, pay attention to Moreau. And this was uh, 2015. I began coming to your, your meetings and I watched you hit what I would call a vertical 
learning curve, straight up, when it came to people with addiction. And I can just say from, 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 from a professional uh, point of view that you mastered it incredibly quickly. And I just want to share with you something from, this is your draft for guiding the city of uh, Burlington in response to the opioid crisis. Now folks, this is from a long time ago. This is from 2015. And this shows how progressive the mayor was thinking. I'll just read a few of the principles. Opioid addiction is a public health crisis with a law enforcement component. City government plays a unique and vital role in addressing the opioid challenge. People struggling with opioid addiction need access to treatment without delay. Police should give amnesty to users seeking help for their addictions and send them to treatment. The pharmaceutical company, the pharmaceutical industry has a role in resolving the crisis it helped create. Treatment for opioid addiction should not end upon arrest. Naloxone must be available to people abusing opioids or using opioids, their friends and family, and their emergency service providers. That's not all of them, but you've, there's been incredible progress made in this city, and it is directly a result of your leadership from the bottom of my heart and, and as a, like a representative kind of of parents who have lost children and the profession, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for everything you've done. You've been a courageous mayor. Yeah. Well, you know, again, Ed, um, I, I am proud of the work we've done there. It's, it's, it's um, hard to feel like we've made sufficient progress when more people are dying than, than ever before. It's been the most heartbreaking part of the last 12 years that despite what we have tried to do, we, um, we this problem just continues to grow and grow. Um, it was it was a little bit hopeful to be able to send out the report a couple weeks ago that for six months now we've seen a reduction in the in the police and fire responses to overdoses. Um, I think there's we've heard from the state as well that there maybe has been may, maybe we've turned a corner again at long last after four years of setbacks since the pandemic. Um, and uh, your, your commitment to action and progress here, Ed, has been an inspiration to me. You, you have always shown up and really dedicated your life to, uh, to, turn in, to, to saving lives and turning this around. And it's, uh, it's that kind of commitment that has kept me going and, and continuing to work on this. And, um, yeah, thank you for being here again, as you have so many times in the past. And thank you for continuing. Yeah, I won't be on the Opioid Settlement Advisory Committee anymore after Monday. So keep up, uh, keep up showing up at those uh, at those meetings and making sure uh, the public forum is uh, well, you, you know, is, is an important part of those meetings. Um, I see Officer Corey Oliphant has uh, joined us as he had many times in, in the past. state this, Corey, but I know you um, came to a lot of these bagel meetings at a time when you were kind of taking a pause from your service at the police department, I think trying to figure out what um, what made sense to you and your future, and I don't know, I we really never talked exactly about it, so, you know, put you on the spot with uh, television cameras, but I always felt like these conversations played a role in you deciding that you, um, you, you were still committed to this community and wanted to come back to the police department and continue to serve in that challenging role, so. Police officer always spend it to uh, better women a few words. <laughs> thank you for your continued service. Thanks, sir. Rich. I, want, I want to thank you for re completely rebuilding the bicycle path and, and making it an uh, up-to-date resource for everyone to enjoy. And I also want to thank you for persistently pursuing certain issues. And I think you've actually changed the entire city. Because when I went through those meetings down in the South End where nobody wanted housing, nobody wanted housing, so now that I thought they were going to run you out of the meeting. <laughs> and now I'm out of town. There was a, 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 a year at a <laughs> year at the. You remember the year at the uh, Art Hop where we had uh, paper mache effigies oh, and uh, right. Roville. Right. But, you know, but you stuck with it through all that. 
and now the entire city's come around, a unanimous um, vote on the rezoning, which is building more housing, infill development, which is something you've been pursuing right from the start. Everybody thinks it's because you're a developer, but that isn't the reason. You understand that if you don't build more housing, <laughs> that you, the rents are going to go through the roof. And, and I'm really glad to see the city has turned that corner. So your persistence in, in all of those issues, I think, has paid off and will pay off for the state for a long time to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rick. It's, uh your participation. Rick is one of the regulars going back, I think, to the campaign days. You came to some of them, right? And uh, um, it was, um, you know, for anyone who doesn't know Rick's history here in the city, he was one of the the first the the, the first bike path champions for the actually building it. Not, you know, it was one thing. I am proud of what we did rebuilding it. It, it was the biggest parks project in the history of the city, and it took a lot of work over years to get done, and we made it. We made it better, and we built it to last. And, and uh, it, it was—it's definitely um, one of the things I'm proudest of over the last 11 years. But building it the first time was a whole another kettle of fish, and it wouldn't have happened uh, without your your leadership and your advocacy, taking on some uh, some you know pushing back against uh, all sorts of uh, uh, all sorts of resistance to that early on. Some sometimes from surprising places. So. It's, uh, it's been a lot, Rick, that you've come here and that uh, even though we too have had disagreements on a few things, I know I haven't been able to build the, the, the bike share system that you think is right exactly, but um, it's meant a lot to me that you've come and given your input over the years. Thank you. Carl? Yeah. Yesterday, I saw a bird bite. I saw one too. I thought, I thought they were done with them. You don't need to answer, but I just couldn't yeah. believe it when yeah. I saw that. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Um, actually, yeah, I thought... Uh, I, uh, I don't know, Emma, we might need to follow up on that one. I'm surprised you remember that one. Um, it's great to see so many city councilors here, as usual. City Council President Karen Paul, always already uh, uh, noted. We have Mark Barlow, the North, North District City Councilor, who was here. So, so many times, Sarah Carpenter was here week in, week out, and um, I think uh, it, it's uh, that's another reason why it felt like it was worth doing is to be able to, that 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 you, that you guys uh, came and, and um, saw this as a valuable forum for for a conversation out here in the New North End was a was, was a big part of it. I hadn't uh, turned around, peeked around the corner to see New North End resident. <laughs> Mayor Peter Clavell is joining us as well. I'm a first timer. <laughs> it took me 12 years. But I wanted to come and sit. I see that Stacy's left, but Moreau's getting a lot of thanks. But let's thank Stacy and Moreau's two daughters for 12 years of their life. It's not always easy being a family member of a mayor. So let's give uh, Stacy and the girl a round Thank you, Peter. There definitely are some sacrifices that the family's, big sacrifices the family's made. All, both my daughters and Stacy love this event, though. And they often, they came many times over the years. Ada wanted to be here this morning, and she, if she didn't come down with the fever last night, she would have been here, so. But thank you for, for, for noting that. And both your daughters went to the public school system. Yeah. Which I really appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> um, I see, uh, speaking of uh, the neighborhood code passing the other night, I see several several members of uh, Vermonters for People Oriented Places are here. Um, people that came out. Colin, I'm talking about you, Tori. I just wanted <laughs> to note that uh, you, Ryan, Colin, Todd, uh, your advocacy for many months leading up to the vote on Monday um, was uh, critical to that passing, and uh, and that you you know came here and part of the conversations uh, as people had questions about that was it's great to see you back here. Thank you for being here again. Pretty tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not used to this, you know, local politics. I think that's what we got done. Someone who's here, who I know is here for the very first mornings with Moreau. I just saw Jessica come in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't know if anyone else I didn't know, but you know for certain was here for the very first one. Very first one. <laughs> and many, many Maybe more after. Either. So 
this is Jessica Nordhaus, who uh, is one of uh, the oldest friends I have in town. We met in college in another lifetime, and uh, Jessica ran my first campaign for mayor back in, in 2011. Was the architect of, we were talking about the caucus a few minutes ago. We would not have won that without your, your efforts, and Jessica has gone on to have many great roles in this community. Um, led the Change the Story initiative for a long time and is now playing a key leadership role in Becca Bailett's congressional office. And I'm so touched you're here, Jessica. Thank you for being here. Wouldn't have missed it. Um, I want to I call out Sam Morbell, who I, uh, I'm not sure, uh, I don't know how many of these you made it to, Sam. Is this your first? Or? No, 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 this is my first. This is your first? Yeah. But, uh, you play a big, uh, big role in my surviving the pandemic as well, Sam. Uh, Sam ran the owned and ran the CrossFit gym down the south end of town. Now has a new CrossFit gym at the, the base of uh, base of uh, Main Street. We're building a new road down to you there, Sam. And, uh, <laughs> thank you for being here today. It's touching to you here. Yeah, well, delight to be here. Um, and a particular thank you during the pandemic as a small business owner. Um, the amount of uh, like the amount of support that you gave, um, the amount of uh, time you spent listening to me as a small business owner, you personally spent listening to me, um, helping personally connect me to resources so we could keep air clean, etc. Um, so we could I love seeing the ventilator in the, in the yeah, gym there. It's big and it's ugly, but it works. I know, it was and a it kept loud, us open. It wasn't yeah, easy so, so thank you again for that. Thank you, Sam. All right, I don't, we don't need to belabor this. I mean, uh, how do people want, what do people want to do? We always, this, uh, this always happens. We got coffee and, and bagels around the corner here. And, um, you know, there's not much more I can do with your input from here. <laughs> so maybe we should, uh, maybe we should just uh, make it a party from here and go, uh, go have some refreshments. This is something that really evolved organically over the course of uh, being in this role. I, I started, um, to, my first challenge as a candidate for office was to win a, the Democratic Caucus, which ended up being this kind of epic political event in uh, November, I think it was November 12th, 2011. And who were your opponents in that caucus? Uh, there were three other candidates ultimately, um, and they, each of them had been city councilors or state senators, state reps, uh, Jason Lorber, Tim Ash, and uh, Bram Kranichfeld. Bram just, uh, you may have seen in the news just a few days ago, he's just the governor just appointed to be a state's attorney. Um, and so uh, I had never run for any office before, so um, uh, I, had, I had a strong social network but it was you know I knew I needed to meet hundreds of new people to have a chance to, to win that caucus and one of the strategies that we pursued was to uh, come to these coffee uh, shops around the city and um, just talk to whoever show up answer questions uh, uh, 
talk to people just, you know, we would put up little signs initially so, you know, people knew who, who I was and and, uh, and would just stop, stop in spontaneously. And we did that for weeks, I think uh, like two months leading up to the caucus vote and we had a coffee in each different part of town. We had, you know, we, we had this one here always on Wednesdays. We had an Old North End coffee. We had a South End coffee. Um, there was a fourth somewhere too. I think, <laughs> and uh, um, and that ended up being an extraordinarily close, uh, comp you know, election um, where it went through three uh, three rounds of voting. After the third round of voting, it was just me and one other candidate left, Tim Ash. And after the votes were counted, I had 540 votes, and Tim had exactly 540 votes. So it was a dead tie, and. Uh, we had to keep campaigning for another month before we had the fourth fourth ballot, and so we kept going to the coffee shops. I uh, ended up winning that decisively in that fourth ballot, and then then faced um, an opponent in the general election who was from this part of town, and we knew we didn't we knew there were probably that this was Kurt Wright. He had been a state rep and city councilor from out here. We knew it was probably not going to be possible to win the new North End, but I knew I had to sort of keep it close to have a chance at, at winning and. Um, the, continuing to come here, have a physical presence here, was an important part of that general election campaign, which did go our way. And uh, and then we realized I should keep doing it once uh, once I was in office because it was, and, and we didn't do, we didn't keep all of them. We we had uh, occasional coffees in other other parts of the city, but we kept doing this New North End coffee every Wednesday for 12, for 12 years because. Um, it, it really was a goal of mine to break down the sort of physical isolation of the new North End, which had translated some into kind of political isolation. There was often sort of a sense of polarization and alienation out here, and I thought I could do something about that um, by being here and here and listening to people, talking to people regularly. And I think that, um, it, you know, there's definitely times where this part of the city was uh, unhappy with me, as is, you could say that about every part of the city for one reason or another. But um, I do think having that, you know, sticking to that, coming here, I mean, literally we had this event, except for like Thanksgiving week, we would have an event out here. Once a, once a month or so, I would send a department head to fill in for me because I had some kind of conflict. But um, but we've kept it going for 12 years. I'm proud of it. It was, uh, it, it was an important part of um, how I was able to lead the city for 12 years. Can you name, you mentioned a few before, but like an example that comes to mind of how these meetings actually change your administration and impact the city? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there, there are so many examples because, uh, and they're varied and they're, many of them are very granular. Um, uh, well, like I said before, one of the remarkable things about this event is there's sort of a group of regulars who came more or less every week and that group would shift over time. But then without exaggeration, and we saw it even here today, uh, every Every week for the 12 years, someone new would come for the first time, and they would and they would bring a new issue or question that they wanted addressed. Um, you know, uh, the examples range from uh, people coming to tell me there was a pothole on their street that that needed to be addressed, um, uh, or you know, a problem with their sidewalk. Uh, you know, I remember elderly folks coming saying. You know, you got to do something about this. My my wife is in a wheelchair now. We need the sidewalk addressed. Uh, we had um, sometimes um, uh, people who were hoping to make an investment in the in the city, thinking about you know maybe uh, trying to build something new in, in Burlington. They would come and show up here and and uh, just have a chance to meet the mayor and and uh, get some feedback on on what they were were thinking about. I remember the uh, folks who. Um, are now uh, building the, the hotels at City Place. Uh, I met them first uh, out, out here. Um, we, uh, a lot of people, especially this tar time, the, the bike path is a beloved part of life out here in the New North End. Uh, people would come in and say, you, you got to put a speed limit up on the bike path because of all these uh, electric bicycles that are on there. And, and we've, we've done that. We've established new policy around that. Um, we we have this as you may have heard before this uh, this this policy of plowing half the the bike path during the winter and leaving half of it open for runners and walkers, but leaving the snow there for cross country skiers. That's something that kind of evolved in part out of, out of conversations here. Um, 
we this new this neighborhood code that just passed on on Monday. Um, we did a lot out here. Uh, uh, the planning director came and would have coffee. Uh, joined me for the coffees and actually had coffees of their own here in other parts of the city as a way of getting public input. Um, and then this grassroots organization, Vermonters for People Oriented Places, that is uh, this kind of youth movement in the city. Um, they frequently came and pushed, pushed me to uh, get as much in this reform as possible and engage their neighbors here. So those are a few examples that jump to mind, but there are literally hundreds of others. Thank you. And one more quick thing. So Town Meeting TV kind of putting on the media hat here. There, there's yeah. clearly some challenges in this city around how about around narratives, how we talk to each other, how yeah. do we com communicate about the work that's happening at City Hall. What role do you what do you see as like the media needs of the community and what do you like what role needs to be filled when it comes to making our like dialogue or discourse a little bit healthier and <clears throat> What role does Town Meeting TV, as well as Seven Days Digger, other you know, what 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 can be done to, to make our media environment a little bit healthier? Well, I've, I've said it many times. I hope you and all your colleagues know how much I value what Town Meeting TV does. I think we're so fortunate to have this community resource for for many reasons. I think the the way in which you open up and um, <clears throat> the, the coverage that you provide to to the city council meetings and so many other events is, is remarkable. Um, the fact that people can participate in real time, but then also access uh, <clears throat> archives um, is uh, extremely valuable. I've been, um, I, I, you know, I, I, I believe in my 12 years, your world has changed some, some of the the way in which cable, the role that cable and cable funding played has changed. There was a need for more you know, kind of municipal support, and I've been proud to to work with you and, and find a way to to expand that that support over time and make sure it continues. Um, you know, what more could Town Meeting TV do? You know, is it a, a, a great question? I, I think you guys have been very nimble and adaptive to the increasing role that social media plays, making sure you are trying to reach Burlingtonians uh, through Facebook and Twitter, um, having such an active YouTube channel. I think you guys have, uh, it's, it, 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 you've been uh, in these quickly evolving technological times, you guys have been keeping up with it and it's, it's a great thing. Um, it, and, and I think you make, you know, <clears throat> it's, um, Burlington remains fortunate that we have not seen the devastation of the traditional media that many smaller cities, communities have. Uh, we certainly have seen change. Uh, the Burlington Free Press is a shadow of the what, you, what it was when I came into office. I mean, when I was when I was during those that caucus campaign during that those first years, it was it was a traditional broadsheet with um, many veteran reporters, and we we do miss that. Um, you know, BT Digger has stepped into the breach. Some seven days has expanded their coverage, uh, and we're fortunate to continue to have you know traditional television. Local news is still quite strong here. So, um, but I, I I think we haven't figured out what the future of media. I mean, I think media will always be evolving and always be changing. But I think we're in a particularly uncertain time about uh, how we, you know, continue to uh, in a in a society that's that's becoming kind of atomized and people are getting into their own echo chambers, how we make sure facts are getting out there, how we make sure, um, you know, it's a great test. It's a real test of our democracy. And uh, my, my hunch is that um, a strong town meeting television uh, is uh, an insurance policy um, to, that, 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 is gonna, that that kind of culture is gonna continue here in Burlington. So you can just share um, some reflections on this event and so you know, how long have you been coming to these and uh, what's your experience been? I'm David Call. I live in Burlington right across from the Elmwood Avenue shelter and I've been coming here to support the unhoused. I've been trying to find a balance in our city to be a community activist after my retirement. So I've been really impressed by the mayor and 
all the things that we've been trying to do for the unhoused, and especially for the staff of the Elmwood Avenue Shelter. They're extraordinary, great people. Any more questions? Um, I also live on Elmwood. And I don't, so we're neighbors. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. David. David Call. Nice to meet you. I'm Bobby. Hey. Um, can you think of uh, any any memories of conversations that have happened here that stick out in your in your memory? Well, the Moran plant, and then there's the bike path and the 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 tents on the on the ba Battery Park. Then there's um, the zoning thing that gets brought up a lot, and uh, how sometimes the state and the city don't work well well together at all. And uh, and COVID-19 was really hard on everybody, so that's been talked about a lot. How long have you lived in Burlington? All my life. I've lived in Almond Avenue for 14 years. So, so. You, you live across from the pods? OK. Yeah. Nice. Well, thank you for talking with us, David. Thank you so much. And can you talk a little bit about what this event has meant to the, to the shop and your experience? Sure, you know, as, as Moreau said over uh, 12 years ago when he was running, he said, uh, you know, if I get elected, I'll continue this every Wednesday, uh, hold a meeting out here, and he's held to it. It's pretty impressive, I think. It's been great. Good for North End, good for, uh, good for our shop, obviously, and I think good for Moreau. Yeah. And uh, how long has this shop been around? Well, it's been around for about 20 years. I've had it for about 15. Anything else? Any other reflections about the mayor's administration? Or, um... uh, I mean, I would say it's been a successful 12 years. I think he's been good for the city. Yeah, hope it continues. I'm Dave Hartnett, and I served on the Burlington City Council for eight years. Uh, six of them with under Moreau uh, administration, you know. Um, and then after Moreau was elected, before Moreau was elected, I was on the other team working working hard for uh, Kurt Wright at the time as he, he was running for mayor and Moreau was successful and Moreau won and he became mayor and uh, uh, we developed a uh, working relationship at first but then quickly turned into a friendship um, and it, it's just really from there has it taken on its life of its own right um, yes the bagel on Wednesday mornings have been a big thing for 12 years I've been a big part of it uh, it's been great to be a part of it. I've always felt, though, that these Wednesday mornings were more for the every person, gay voting, that every person, uh, you know, couldn't be involved in city politics, right? They didn't have time to go to the meetings. They didn't have time to run for city council. It was their opportunity to come here and meet the mayor and kind of, you, you know, listen to what was going on in the city and then also for the mayor to listen to some of their concerns. And so I thought Wednesday morning was less about politics as far as the politicians right we always had our time with the mayor monday nights all the meetings this was more about community and having people come here and reaching out and uh i think it really i hope emma will continue uh doing it i think she will uh you know I'll let, so it's just been a great tradition uh it's a great turnout here this morning it's hard to believe it's been 12 years and a big thank you to peter berenberg right how many people open up their business like this, right, uh, to the community? Every Wednesday for an hour. And sometimes, you know, we might have 10 or 12 people, but sometimes there might be 25 to 30 people. And, uh, you know, it's nice of Peter to be a, to do that, right? And uh, it's all about, to me, it's all, it tells you all you want to know about the new North End, right? It's the, it's the best place to live. And uh, we've enjoyed every minute of it and uh, look forward to uh, Emma's administration. And hopefully, if not once a week, maybe Emma will do it once a month. But we look forward for Emma to come out as well. Can um, so you just share a little bit about this event, your experience with it, and your reflections on the bagel breakfast? Sure. Uh, Sarah Carpenter, Ward 4 City Council. And I come here every week because this is, in fact, my ward, and these are my neighbors. And I'm really grateful that the mayor has taken the time to spend time with our neighbors and listen to what we have to say. Um, I think that's a special part of Burlington City Government. We try to hear what each of us have to say we often and not not often but sometimes don't agree and this is I think a really good relaxed forum to air some disagreements and share news and just an important part of um, keeping us all engaged 